Welcome to a practical guide for fire alarm notification. Presented by Eaton. What you will learn during this e-learning course will guide you through the maze of fire notification requirements set out by various code bodies such as NFPA and ANSI, as well as the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Emphasis is on the harmonization of the various code agencies and legislative actions from ADA. You will learn practical applications and understanding of concepts such as spacing requirements, synchronization, and equivalent facilitation. The individual code agencies' requirements are discussed in the course, and we will finish up with the harmonized requirements at a glance. Since the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, the importance of notification appliances has become more evident to everyone involved in the design, installation, and operation of fire alarm systems. Concern, however, was soon expressed to the ADA's access board by people with photosensitive epilepsy. As a result, a coalition was formed with members from the Epilepsy Foundation of America, Self Help for the Hard of Hearing, and the National Association for the Deaf. Harmonized requirements is a good thing. Changes have harmonized NFPA, UL, ANSI and ADA requirements for fire alarm signaling and allow a unified approach to the design, installation, and enforcement of strobe appliances in fire alarm systems. Harmonized requirements, reflected in NFPA 72 and ANSI A117.1, which cover audible and visual appliances, mounting height, space allocation, sleeping rooms, flash rate limits, synchronized strobe flashing, and any pending revisions to ADA accessibility guidelines are consistent with NFPA, UL, and ANSI. The ADA Accessibility Guidelines and ANSI A117.1 were published in 2004. Each of these documents simply references NFPA 72 for fire alarm signaling requirements. Complete harmonization benefits the fire alarm industry by eliminating the confusion of multiple code requirements, resulting in a more uniform consistent code enforcement. Public Mode Requirements the NFPA 72 National Fire Alarm and Signaling Code 2019 edition requires that audible notification appliances intended for use in public mode shall have a sound level of 15 dBA above the average ambient sound level or 5 dBA above the maximum sound level having a duration of 60 seconds, whichever is the greater, when measured 5 feet above the floor in the occupiable area. This can be found in NFPA 72, section 18.4. All references of NFPA 72, unless otherwise noted, are from the 2019 edition. Where approved by the authority having jurisdiction or other governing codes or standards, the requirements for audible signaling shall be permitted to be reduced or eliminated when visible signaling is provided in accordance with section 18.4.4.2. Audible alarm notification appliances installed in elevator cabs and restrooms shall be permitted to use the audibility criteria for private mode appliances. This is detailed in NFPA 72 sections 18.4.4.3 and 18.4.4.4. To ensure that the audible private mode signals are clearly heard, they shall have a sound level of 10 dBA above the average ambient sound level or 5 dBA above the maximum sound level. Having a duration of 60 seconds, whichever is greater, when measured 5 feet above the floor in the occupiable area. Where approved by the authority having jurisdiction or other governing codes or standards, the requirements for audible signaling shall be permitted to be reduced or eliminated when visible signaling is provided in accordance with NFPA section 18.5. Now let's talk about visible characteristics in private mode. Visible notification appliances used in the private mode shall be of sufficient quantity and intensity and located so as to meet the intent of the user and the authority having jurisdiction. In public mode, the requirement for strobes changes considerably, for example, in sleeping areas. 
The minimum required intensity of visual notification appliances in sleeping areas, after establishing the mounting height, where the appliance is mounted less than 24 inches from the ceiling, it must have a minimum 177 candelas effective rating. This is meant to penetrate a possible smoke layer in the event of a fire. If the appliance is 24 inches or more from the ceiling, it is permitted to be rated 110 candelas effective or more. The table to the right reflects the effective intensity requirements. Additionally, if the unit is to be wall mounted, it must be located at least 80 inches above the floor, but not more than 96 inches above the floor. If that places it within 24 inches of the ceiling, it must have 177 candela effective rating. If it is 24 inches or more from the ceiling, it can be a 110 candela effective appliance. If the unit is to be ceiling mounted, it must be a 177 candela. It is important to note that the critical measurement is the distance to the pillow, which cannot exceed 16 feet, measured horizontally. Spacing requirements, wall. Spacing requirements shall be in accordance with NFPA 72 tables, such as 18.5.5.5.1a, room spacing for wall-mounted visual notification appliances, which is shown in the table, to the right. Candela listed in the table is the minimum requirement. However, it is acceptable to use a higher-intensity visual appliance. Spacing requirements, ceiling. Spacing requirements shall be in accordance with NFPA 72 tables, such as 18.5.5.5.1b, room spacing for ceiling mounted visual notification appliances, which is shown in the table to the right. Candela listed in the table is the minimum requirement. However, it is acceptable to use a higher intensity visual appliance. Visible notification appliances shall be installed in accordance with 18.5.5.5. 1A or B, using one of the following. A single visible notification appliance. Two groups of visual appliances, where visual notification appliance of each group are synchronized in the same room or adjacent space within the field of view. This shall include synchronization of visual appliances operated by separate systems. More than two visible notification appliances or groups of synchronized appliances in the same room or adjacent space within the field of view that flash and synchronization. Room spacing for wall-mounted appliances shall be based on locating the visual notification appliance at the halfway distance of the wall. In square rooms with appliances not centered or in non-square rooms, the effective intensity from one wall-mounted visual notification appliance shall be determined by maximum room size dimensions, obtained either by measuring the distance to the farthest wall or by doubling the distance to the farthest adjacent wall, whichever is greater. The key to proper coverage in irregular spaces is to the divide the space into a series of squares and provide proper coverage for each square as if it were an independent space. Spacing in corridors. Because the occupants are usually alert and moving, and because their vision is focused by the narrowness of the space, corridor signaling is permitted to be by direct viewing of lower intensity, 15 candela appliances. That is, alerting is intended to be done by direct viewing of the visual notification appliance. The installation of visual notification appliances in corridors 20 feet or less in width shall be in accordance with the requirements of either 18.5.5.5, spacing in rooms, or 18.5.5.6, spacing in corridors. 20 feet or more should comply with spacing in rooms. Visual notification appliances shall be located no more than 15 feet from the end of the corridor, with a separation not greater than 100 feet between appliances. Where there is an obstruction or interruption of the viewing path, such as a fire door or elevation change, the area should be treated as a separate corridor.
In NFPA 72, 2002 edition, performance-based method for strobe spacing was added. This alternative to the prescriptive strobe spacing tables permits any design that provides a minimum 0.0375 lumens per square feet of illumination at any point within the covered area at all angles specified by the polar dispersion planes for wall or ceiling mounted visual notification appliances. Documentation showing the calculation illumination must be provided to the AHJ. Wheelock strobe tool, which can be found on Eaton.com, automates these calculations and provides the capability to print the required documentation. Let's talk a little bit about equivalent facilitation. Section 2.2 of the ADA Accessibility Guidelines permits alternative designs that achieve equivalent or greater accessibility. The visual effect or illumination of a light source at a particular distance is determined as illumination being the intensity divided by distance squared. For example, ADA's original guideline of a 75 candela strobe intensity at a distance of 50 feet equates to an illumination of 0.030 lumens per square foot. NFPA's requirement for a 15 candela strobe intensity in a 20 by 20 foot room provides a typical illumination of 0.0375 lumen per square foot. ADA guidelines now reference the intensity and spacing allocations that are in NFPA 72. Equivalent facilitation, basically, allows any design or method that achieves 0.0375 lumens per square foot in a given space. This approach essentially harmonizes both the NFPA and ADA requirements. For effective design and installation of synchronized strobes, ADA recommends that a composite flash rate in excess of 5 Hz shall be avoided for multiple strobes installed in the field of view and indicates that the use of synchronized strobes should provide an acceptable alternative when more than two strobes are installed in the same field of view. It's important to remember that in order to meet ADA's concern for effectively alerting the hearing impaired, strobe flash rates must be a minimum, one flash per second, across the regulated voltage range. Regulated voltage range is the terminology used by UL to identify the voltage range. Using lower intensity synchronized strobes can provide better alerting since occupants can often directly view the strobe flash. In addition, the selection of strobe intensity and location is simplified. Synchronized temporal pattern. NFPA requires the use of the three pulse temporal pattern T3 for more than just total building evacuation. Prior to the 2013 edition, the use of temporal code 3 distinctive evacuation signal was intended only where evacuation of the building was the intended response. In order to eliminate the need for additional signals to mean relocate, the signal is now permitted to be used where relocation or partial evacuation is the intended response. This correlates to ANSI ASAS 3.41. The simple result is, people should not be in any area where the signal is sounding, and that it is safe to be anywhere that the signal is not sounding. To ensure that the sounds from multiple signals within a notification zone do not overlap and interfere with the distinctive temporal pattern, the devices shall be synchronized. Since a majority of fire alarm installations are retrofit applications, the ability to install synchronized appliances using two wires becomes a significant issue. With the use of two wire signaling appliances, existing wiring may not have to be replaced unless the current capacity of the existing NAC circuits needs to be increased. Let's now take a look at the harmonized requirements at a glance. For strobe intensity, the minimum is 15 candela in non-sleeping rooms and corridors where there is direct view. The minimum for sleeping rooms is 110 candela for wall mount and 177 candela for ceiling mount appliances. For light distribution, the tables shown in this slide specify the allowable percentage of illumination loss at specific degrees on and off axis in both the vertical and horizontal planes. 
Harmonized requirements for flash rate are a 1 Hz minimum to 2 Hz maximum flash rate across the regulated voltage range. For multiple strobes, it gets even simpler, where there are more than two appliances in any field of view, they shall be synchronized. For wall mounting height, the rule is 80 inches to 96 inches from the floor, except in sleeping areas. Refer to Eaton's data sheet TD450028EN for backbox mounting heights for wall mounted strobe appliances. For room spacing, the allocation tables found in NFPA 72 provide abundant guidance. For strobe spacing in corridors, if the corridors are greater than 20 feet wide, use the room spacing tables. If not, then the basic rule is to place the minimum 15 candela strobes 15 feet inside each end of the corridor and maintain spacing of no greater than 100 feet between devices. Strobe spacing for sleeping rooms must be within 16 feet of the bed pillow. Harmonized requirements for audible intensity. The intensity must be 15 decibels above ambient or 5 decibels above any maximum sound with a duration of 60 seconds, whichever is greater. Let's review the ADA guidelines. The Americans with Disabilities Act became fully applicable January 26, 1993 for building managers, building owners, owners, or principals of business and organizations who provide a place of public accommodation. This includes, but not limited, to the following, retail stores, factories, showrooms, sales offices, places of entertainment, and places of recreation. Final Harmonization, NFPA, ANSI, ADA. NFPA 72 and ANSI A117.1 are standards which are incorporated as regulations in many regional, state, local and model building codes. The signaling requirements in the latest version of the ANSI standards and the latest version of ADA guidelines are harmonized with NFPA 72. Thank you for joining Eaton's presentation. A practical guide to fire alarm notification. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local sales manager or contact us at lifesafety at eaton.com.